This is the shit that they don't teach you at university. What's going on team? My name's David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia, and this is part eight of the ArcCAD course. Today, we're talking about roofs and all of the finer details that they simply just don't tell you about and expect you to know. If you've been on the channel for a while now, you may have noticed just a small tweak to that little introduction from guys to team, and that's for a very simple reason. 20% of you watching right now are female, and that is incredible to see the demographic changing. So thank you so much for being a part of the team. Let's get started with today's tutorial. Moving on to part eight, which is our roof design. You notice that I went ahead and created this master suite on the right from part seven, just like we discussed. If you wanna copy it, take a screenshot, go ahead, go for it. But let's move on to the actual roof. If we jump across to 3D, we'll see the roof has nothing going on. It's pretty basic, it's pretty boring, nothing special whatsoever. But we do want to make it something special. We do want to make it something exciting. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's discuss what the actual roof styles are and the roof types are. So let's jump back to the first floor. Go to our roof tool over here on the left-hand panel. It simply looks like an A-frame roof. Select our roof tool. Make sure it's on the right layer as always. And then we have two options. We have a single plane and we have a multi-plane roof option. The multi-plane is going to create a typical and traditional hip and valley roof. I'm going to start with this one because we're not actually going to use it. I don't like them too much. They're great in particular use cases, but not for this design today. So to create a traditional hip and valley roof, you simply select one of the corners on the outside, making sure that your reference line, which is the first line of this selection, is correct. That depends on your wall structure, your roof type, if it's steel or timber, how you're pitching it, etc. But for the purposes of today, we are literally just going to trace around the outside of our building perimeter. If I finish that box, you're going to see it immediately creates this hip and valley roof. So I'm going to bring that to the front to showcase it in front of all of my furniture. You'll see there are a number of parts to this roof as it stands but I know it's on the wrong layer straight away. So I'm gonna click Command T, change it from my first floor to my roof plan and press OK. Now Command Up, you will see it on the floor above. Command Down, you will see it disappear. If I come into my 3D once again, you'll see that roof created and it is looking pretty good pretty quickly. It's not too shabby, it's pretty basic, but it does the job. And if you've never used a Hibben Valley roof, you probably have no idea what any of these parts are called. I'm going to jump back to our dear friend, Louis Ferruccio, and just showcase one of his great pictures from his ebook, which explains quite a few of the elements straight away. So if we look at this picture here, you'll see that the gutters are the elements around the perimeter of the roof that capture the water. They are always, well, most typically, the lowest point of the roof and that section. So in our instance, the gutter would be positioned right here if we were to create a roof. Now, Graphisoft has CI tools built in, so you can go coverings, roof coverings, and select a corrugated roof very quickly, press OK, and it will create a 3D corrugated roof. Now, this roof again is a paid extension, paid add-on to ArcCAD. You may or may not have it, but that simply, you see the gutter created at the bottom. If you don't have it, not a problem. We're not really gonna be talking about the 3D cladding too much. I'm simply gonna undo that step and keep going. Talking about the highest point in the roof line of the hip and valley roof is the ridge. Now, the ridge is this line at the very top. It's also this line at the very top. The ridge is again, the uppermost like a ridge of a mountain. Once again, talking about those hips and those valleys and those mountains, the valley itself is the part of the roof that falls in between two sections towards a gutter. So this section right here would be our valley in the roof and you would have a valley gutter technically inside that falling into your downpipes and to your gutter along the perimeter. The opposite of the valley is obviously the hip, the hips and the valleys. And in our case, the hips are right here. They're like the hips of a person. They point up towards the middle of the spine. So you can almost see a small person here if you draw a really funny picture. So for me personally, just because this is how my brain works, you would see a person's legs here, 
you would see their body here. There's one arm, there's potentially another one over there, and there's a random head. So we have our funny man from our hip and valley roof. Alongside all of these elements, of course, you're gonna have extra things like dormers and skylights, bridges and bits and pieces here and there, but typically that is most of the information you need to know about a hip and valley roof. If I was to put back the 4D cladding, you'd see a few extra items as well. First of all, you'd see the hip flashing, which covers the two cladding elements on the each side. You'd see the ridge flashing, and you would also see the valley gutter. Now, that corrugated tin comes all the way across. That valley gutter sits underneath the corrugated tin, so the water doesn't circulate and the pressure isn't built up, pushed back in, cause water problems. So the water naturally falls down the ribs of the corrugated into the valley gutter, into our gutters on the side, and then you would have a downpipe connected as well. Now there's no downpipes drawn on this for whatever particular reason at the moment. If I go back to my first floor plan, command up, I can simply create a quick gutter just to showcase it to you guys here. That right there is our downpipe from our gutter now. And if you've never seen a downpipe in a gutter, what it does is basically control the flow of water off the roof into the ground and away from the house. It is critical that you do not let the water simply just stop right here next to the foundations of the house because those foundations will over time fall away, the ground will decay and the house will collapse. So be smart with your water, get the plumber to route the water away correctly into soap wells and just get that water away from the foundations of your house. Once again, this cladding, not important. So let's simply select it all, delete it and move away. I don't think I've actually spoken about this find and select tool. So let's undo that and showcase that once again for you guys. If you press command or control F, you can activate the find and select tool. If you can't find it there, help find and select. It's also in your edit menu down the bottom there. To use the find and select tool, you can either go through one by one, select the individual item you want, add additional information and filtering tools such as surface color or even the surface name or anything you want in between. But simply you select one item, you ask it to select the properties, it finds all those properties and then you can select everything similar. You can be as specific as you want with this or very generic just to get rid of all roof coverings in this instance. What we've done now is basically explained a hip and valley roof very, very, very quickly and we can delete it because we don't want it, we don't need it, it's ugly. A quick little interlude from me to tell you three things. One, the Discord link down below is full of great architects and students from around the world just looking to better themselves. It's completely free, so please join it. Number two below that is a Patreon link. If you want any of the ArchiCAD files that I've used specifically for YouTube, you can download them via a Patreon subscription. And last but not least, throughout this entire video, we have been referencing the graphic guide to residential design. You can grab your copy of the ebook in the description down below. It is a phenomenal resource and well worth the money. If we move back down to our first floor plan, just so we can see what's going on, Select our roof tool again and select the infamous single pane roof. This thing is a pain because you're gonna have to redraw and reconnect every single section of a roof if you do a hip and valley roof this way. If you're doing a skillion roof, a mono pitch roof, a shed roof, whatever you call it around the world, this is the way you do it. Simply select that single pane, select the lowest point of your roof, which for me will be this backside. Click on the side you want the roof to go up and then start by drawing your roof. For me, in this instance, I want all of the walls on the outside to be parapets, and I'll explain what that means in a second. So what I'm gonna have to do is draw on the inside of my external walls this time, except for the very bottom one where my gut is going to be. So drawing on the inside of every single one, connecting, finishing off, Coming back to our 3D, we'll see our roof again on the wrong level. So change that to roof plan, press OK. And it's at a 22 degree pitch. Doesn't need to be at 22 degrees. Depending on where you are in the world, depending on how much rainfall you get, depending on if you get snow or not, you can basically go down to as low as one degree, which is one degree and nine minutes if you're documenting to timber framing codes. Now, a single pitch roof is super basic. It pitches from the backside, it goes in one direction, all the water falls in one direction, and you have downpipes only on one side and one gutter on one side. 
The disadvantage is you basically need to select all of your external walls, increase the overall height of these walls, which increases the budget, at least 150 millimeters past the cladding. Now, this is just the roof structure, not the cladding. So I'd probably go anywhere from about 300 mil plus this, which means our wall height is 3,900 millimeters. I can easily just connect this as well by duplicating that wall, hiding it and creating that little box. But there we have a Skillion roof where you basically don't see the roof whatsoever. It is completely concealed. And if we were to once again, go to our CI tools coverings, roof coverings, again, paid feature, you may or may not have this. It will create our roof. What we didn't discuss in the hip and valley roof is what the sides here are called. And if I select my roof, go to my coverings and edit my edges, it will allow me to explain that a little bit better. So this one is backwards upside down based on the image I'm showing you. The gutter, this line here, is actually the bottom side where our gutter is visible. This on the side has created a barge, a junction, a barge, and another junction. There's a few different options, including an apron. In this particular scenario, every one of these walls, except the bottom wall here, where the gutter is, would be an apron. So we would change all of our roof types from barge and junction to apron and press OK. You'll see the cladding style immediately changes and the flashing type changes. You'd basically cut into the side of this silicon join or run that flashing all the way up over and cap the top of this wall to protect it from the weather. If you didn't want to extend past this wall, so for instance, you wanted the roof to extend past and so you could see the side of that actual roof profile, first of all, you'd have to trim the roof. So to do so, right click our wall, come down to connect, solid element operations. The wall is our target. The roof is our operator. And in this instance, we want to subtract with an upwards extrusion. Smash that execute button and you'll see that wall is automatically trimmed. Now we would have to change our roof edge once again here from an apron, double click on that to a barge, press OK to see that change to a barge. A barge, very simple. It is the side like a barge board at the docks where the boats come and plow and hit. That is the exposed element to the side of the roof just to protect the side of the roof from everything. And a junction, obviously quite simple. If there was another roof falling back that way, it's a junction point where these two elements meet. So I'm not gonna really go ahead and show that. But that is very simply put, all of the elements of a roof, how they operate, how quickly they're formed together and what they need to be, how they need to operate. If you wanted this roof to be a lower pitch, a higher pitch, or anything in between, you could. Now, if you wanted a concrete roof, whole another kettle of fish. First of all, you don't have any cladding on top. You have a flat roof, zero, zero. This concrete roof would then literally be defined by falls in the material itself, like there is in your bathrooms and your showers, falling towards different waste points in the roof. This roof would then drain either through the building wherever possible, or it would still drain to the edge around a box gutter, which is basically a gutter surrounded by parapets. Concrete roofs are great in the right environment. If it's in snow, you gotta heat them so that the snow doesn't overload the roof and collapse in on you. And if you're in torrential rain, it isn't recommended because you may end up with problems as well. However, besides the actual price of concrete roofs in Australia, they are awesome. They look phenomenal. If you wanted to extend them five, six, seven meters past, you easily could if you wanted a cantilever, something like that. Create a beautiful shading device over the side of your house with no supporting structure underneath, you could. You can't really do that in too many other elements unless you get massive steel columns, whereas that could probably be 350, 400 mil thick of concrete cantilevered backspanned, away you go. But if you did want a concrete roof, you can then extend your roof to the outside, trim all of your walls to the top of that roof, and away you go. To progress this tutorial, it's part nine, where we start looking at elevations and sections. I'm going to leave this roof as an entire apron around all the sides. So simply undo a few of those features and then I'm going to delete my CI coverings tool roof 
because I know not all of you will have it. Anyway, that's all for me today, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. To the side of me is the playlist that holds all of this ARCAD course so far and yet to come. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.